seen them live on video. You live already? Uh, I didn't get my message. The um, the thing is, is that um, you know we were talking about a little bit earlier um, about uh, what were we talking? Oh, uh, we were talking. I think one thing you know that 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 causes confusion, that causes unbelief, that causes doubt, that causes any of that stuff is like we were saying earlier was that because there are different gospels, you know, in the minds of people. Now, the thing is, is that like I was saying, you know, if you grew up in the black community and so forth, you got a different kind of gospel that you believe. If you grew up in like a white community or even a mixed community, you got a different gospel and stuff. And, you know, and, and, and then as I think about that, you know, the gospel is really honed towards whatever your culture is, as opposed to just preaching the Bible, you know, like what it is, you know, because I, I was thinking about this quite a bit, you know, some time ago was like, you know, people would like to say, well, you know, they black, so they worship different than we worship, you know, and the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that we all, when the Bible says, you know, you know, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, he's talking to everybody. That's right. Yeah. He ain't talking to a particular race. See, that's what that's the thing about the church. The church is just as bad as the world. Yep. You know, they gotta attach a race or a color to everything, you know, when it doesn't matter to God. You know, it does not matter to God and stuff. And and and, and, and people, well, I'm not going to that church, you know, that, that white church over there, that black church over there, that is so stupid. I mean, just stupid. And, and that's just, you know, something that the devil uses, you know, race for everything. Right. And you got people that will buy into that lie the minute that they talk about anything dealing with race, you know, they're going to make it racism or white supremacy or something like that, you know. And it's amazing to me because I was thinking about, you know, how the Bible says that, that the God of this world having blinded their mind, you know, blinded their mind. And the devil has taken a group of people and literally tied up in their mind mm -hmm. so tight, you know, a, a couple of things, a couple of words that, you know, they can hear the words and the situation has, doesn't even have to be true, but they all get triggered. Because of the word racism and white supremacy. Black people get, get triggered by that. Some black, most black people that vote anyway, they get triggered by that. And what it tells me is that when you give attention to the devil, the devil wants to gain control over your life. Right. The True. first place he's going to begin is in your big old knucklehead. Yeah. That's where he's going to begin. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm telling them, when I say knucklehead, I'm talking about somebody who buys into that lie. See? Because the thing is, it's amazing, you know, you have the truth available, but you won't even do any research to find out what the truth is. You just believe it because why? You've been conditioned that way. Right. See, you've been conditioned to be triggered anytime you hear certain words or certain things. They trigger you, and they don't trigger you to draw close to God. They trigger you to divide and to cause hate is what it does, see. And that's exactly what the devil wants, see? Yeah. That's his whole calling card, you know, is to trigger hate and to trigger division in people and stuff. And, you know, and to make a people think for so long, you know, that everything is racism, that everything is about, you know, if the white man did this to me and the white man did that to me and stuff, and you live like that and you believe that kind of stuff, even though when you look around you, that's the big one of the biggest lies I was ever told. Right. Yep. Because you have the same freedom as everybody else has and stuff, but you just choose to stay locked up, you know, in your mind, you know, about something that your father, the devil, put up in your mind. You believed it. You accepted it. You start building up on it, you know. In, in fact, so as a result, that's what you have become, a racist. Right. The very people you're calling the racist, you're the one that's the racist. They're not hating, but you are. Mm -hmm. For no unknown reason. See, that's what the devil does. The devil will blind you so bad to where you see stuff that ain't even really there. Mm -hmm. See, you know how sometimes, even in your own mind, yourself, individual, you can convince yourself to believe something even though that it's not even real. Right. 
Because as long as you believe it in your mind to you, it's real. Right. It's right. real because I believe it. It's real and stuff. And because you believe it, you know, you know when it's uh, when it's something that is bad, then what are you gonna do? You are gonna act on it because eventually, okay, the devil. You know, when the Bible talks about blinding your mind, what I think about is anything that would interfere with whatever it is in your head that you're blinded to, anything that will interfere to that, interfere with that. That's the thing that you really are blinded to. Right. You don't want anything that's going to change your perspective or change the way you feel or change the way you believe on something. You don't want to hear anything that's going to interfere with that. And that's the very reason why you hate those other people. See, because the, the fact of the matter is when you look at it in, in truth, truthfully or whatever, you're believing a lie. But you're not going to convince yourself of that. You don't want nobody convincing you of that. When somebody tries to tell you the truth, what you're going to do, you're going to lash out at them. You're going to get mad at them. You're going to hate them. See? And that just makes it even worse, you know, because you just gave the devil more control of your life. Because you're acting on the lie that he's put in your mind and in your heart that you accept it. He couldn't make you receive it and, and, and take it. And what he did was there were so many other people that he put around you to believe that same lie and to propagate that same lie and to confess that same lie and to continue to feed and feed that lie to the point to where, you know, you don't, you're at the point where you don't even think about it anymore. You just actually just, all you do is just react. When you hear that word, that's what you do. Yeah. You go out here and you start creating havoc and stuff. You start calling people names. You start treating people, you know, a certain way, all because of a lie that you have believed and stuff. Right. See, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get it, man. I mean, it's just crazy to me that people will not take the time to find out the truth. And you know why they don't do that? Because they don't want to know the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. They feel quite comfortable because they got so many other fools just like them and stuff. And so as long as they've got somebody that agree and believe the way that they believe, then, you know, they don't really give a, 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 a rip about changing. Right. They will just continue to remain just the way that they are, you know, and, and stuff. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, you know, the very people that ought to be trying to show them the truth or whatever, they're the very ones that are pushing forward, you know, these lies and these deceptions. See? Yep. And, and they've been doing it for like, you know, 50 years, you know. Can you imagine calling other people racist because somebody else told you to call them racist? Mm -hmm. When in essence, the people that, that are telling you to call them racist are the ones that are the racist. Right. You know, they're the very ones, you know, that, 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 that create racial tension, racial hate and stuff, you know. But yet, you're too stupid, you know, to find out the truth for yourself, see. You know, I... I uh, I posted something on Facebook the other day about knowing your history and stuff, you know, and see the devil don't care what color you are. The devil will make a fool out of you. Yeah. And not only that, see, this is the thing about the devil. <laughs> the devil will make a fool out of you. And then he will have you to make a fool out of somebody else, you know, and both of y'all are his children. Yep. See? Yeah. <laughs> both of y'all are the children of the devil, see? So that just shows you right there. The devil don't care nothing about you stuff. All the devil wants to do is have his business being done, and he will make you look like a fool if he has to. Yeah. Because if you wake up and realize, oh, man, I've been a fool, that's okay. There's a whole bunch of other fools out there. Right. You know, he's still got a big pool to choose from mm -hmm. and stuff. Because of the fact that people have been so inundated with lies, with fear, with deception and stuff. They don't take the time to find out the truth. You know, the same thing takes place in the church. People do not take time to research scripture, to look into scripture, to search the scripture, to see whatever it is that they're believing or that they're hearing is truly of God or not. Right. They would much rather have somebody else tell them, you know. And really the reason that these people will not trust God and have faith in God is because they don't want to look it up for themselves, but they know that there's always opinions out there and they can go out there and search and, and, search and find an opinion instead of going to the book and looking for the truth. Right. See? And that just shows you people, the, the truth is not important to people in church hardly anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not important, you know. When Joshua said, you know, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. You know, and when you make a choice, you know, you're choosing between 
God and the devil right. are good and mm -hmm. evil, and not only that, life and, and eternal death. Right. Right. See, yeah, true. You choose, you're making that choice and stuff. Yeah. So when you make a choice, then that choice that you make, you're going to have to live with it because you made the choice. Right. See, yeah, But the thing about it is you ignore the fact that God tells you what the consequences are of certain choices that you make. Yeah. It's in the Bible. Right. You know that if you're obeying God, and if God, if, if you're obeying God, and God says, if you endure until the end, if you serve me and do my will until the end, what does he say? You know, the same shall be saved. You'll be saved and you'll spend eternity with God. But if you choose not to do that, then what do you think happens? See? Yeah. You suffer the consequences of a sinner. Mm -hmm. See? And the thing is that when you disobey God, when you reject God, when you don't choose God, then you are choosing the devil and the life that goes with serving him. That's true. Right, See, right. that's what you've chosen to yeah. do and stuff. And, and you know, and I'm going to tell you something. There are so many people that they will allow, they will allow themselves to be deceived by the devil. Yeah. And the thing is, is that they always, well, I don't know if I want to do it. Well, I don't know if this, I, well, I don't know if that. And the thing about, you know what happens to those people? They have procrastinated for so long, they are comfortable right. with indecision. Yeah. Right. They don't make a choice. Well, they just, oh, I don't know, I don't know what. Because, see, the thing is, is that it's not like they don't have the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not like they don't know where to find the truth, see? Mm -hmm. But yet they will still walk around indecisive, you know, wavering, doubting, unbelieving and stuff. And the Bible says when you do that, what happens? You don't get anything from right. God. Right. You don't get anything from God. And, and you know what? They get so messed up in the head, they don't even think about the consequences of their indecision right. and stuff. The will not to make a choice. Because when God spoke through Joshua, what did he say? You choose this day whom you're going to serve. Right. You choose. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me give you a little hint. He said, choose life that you might live. Right. And not only that, he said, but for me and my house, we're serving God. Yes, yes. He said, we're serving God, see? And the thing about it, a lot of people like to say that, mm -hmm. but they don't like live that way and mm -hmm. stuff. And the sad thing about it is they think that they can, can, that they can trick God, mm. you know? They, think, they really do. They think they can trick God ah. and stuff. And because think about it. If you know the truth, if I were to tell you, okay, Ken, you know, the Bible says if you don't repent of your sin, that if you die in that sin, that you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. See, you're going to spend eternity in hell. But the Bible said if you repent, right. you know, and then I'll explain to you, you know, and you're talking somebody, I'll explain to you what that means. You know, you can take them through the scripture, you know, and you show them what the Bible says. Okay, and then they say, oh, okay, I, I believe that. You know, I want, I want to get saved. And so, and so they repent of their sin. But yet, when the road gets rough and a little bit tough, they go back. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that there was no root in that confession. Right. Right. Yeah. There was no faith in that confession. So you yeah. got a bunch of people walking around. Now, to them, the confession was real. Mm -hmm. And so they tell people, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, okay, you're saved, but you need to be living a certain way. Mm -hmm. You got to be manifesting some fruit and stuff. See? Right. Yeah. But yet, you say, no, no, no. They showed me in the Bible where all I had to do was repent or whatever, see? But that wasn't the thing, see? That wasn't the only thing. Yeah, you got to repent, but I did tell you, you know, you got to read the Bible for yourself. You got to study it for yourself, and you got to know and find out what it is that God expects of you now, right. see? Because I'm not going to be sitting up here with you every day because God told you to study yourself, <laughs> see? So here, if you, here's the Bible. Right. You know, and you take this Bible right. and you read this Bible because this is God's word. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. but see, most people want you to. Well, I, 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 I don't really like reading that Bible because I can't understand it. So, can you explain it to me every day? Call me, give me a call. Huh? That ain't happening. I'm gonna call you, but it ain't gonna be what you what you gonna like. <laughs> you know. You want to sit around and, and be an, and be an idiot? Then you know, I'm not wasting my time with you. Right. Right. You know, because, I mean, I don't have any problem, you know, spending time with somebody or helping somebody, you know, that has a hunger and a thirst for the truth. Right. See, 
And, not, and honestly, that's what's supposed to happen, and that's what should happen mm -hmm. if your confession of faith was sincere. Right. right. You know, you should have a hunger for the truth. Right. See? But, you know, we, we listen too much to outside voices. People listen too much to outside voices. Oh, well, you need to this, this, this person. You need to listen to that person, whatever. And see, the sad thing about it is they allow the devil to run them all over the country, <laughs> you know, trying to find out something that if they really wanted to know, all they would have to do is go in the Bible right. and find it in Scripture. Right. See, right. they make the life hard themselves and stuff. But, you know, when they say, well, ooh, I listen to so-and-so. Oh, well, child, I would, oh, I like him too, see. And so they do this stuff so that they can, you know, uh, uh, have a relationship or sound as if they, they are really doing God's business and stuff because they're sharing it with somebody that they deem important or, quote, spiritual or whatever. <laughs> See? Well, you know, my friend and stuff, God says, look, you know, that's your friend, not mine. You know? Because God says, if you make yourself a friend of the world, right, he said, right. I'm your enemy. That's right. right. Yeah, See? So you can't be a friend of God and out there hanging out with the enemy. Right. How stupid is that? That's right. true. Pretty stupid. That don't make no sense. Uh -uh. See? You know, and not only that, see, if they were to read the word of God, they would understand and know the Bible says, come out from the world. Right. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's right. what the Bible says. See? Right. So if you are wanting to be a child of God, but you want to waver and doubt and unbelieve and all of this stuff, you're not getting anything from God. Right. Turn to James chapter 1. You know, I mean, people, you know, really, they think that, that God is stupid, yep. that I'm stupid, that you're stupid. But see, they don't realize we read the word of God and we believe it right. and stuff. Right. And we don't believe something just because you said it. Just because you said it and stuff. If God didn't say it, we're not believing it, right. you know. And anybody that's ever come through this church, I told them exactly that. If people aren't, if they speak something to you, you know, you better make sure that uh, it's in the Bible. that it's in the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, in verse, uh, we'll start up in verse five, uh, 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, what, did, what did James just say? He said, your patience is going to be tried. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the trying of your faith, brother, is going to be tried. And he said, but what you need to do, you need to let your faith or the trying of your faith have a perfect work. Mm -hmm. a work is, your faith worketh patience. And he said, but let patience have her perfect work. See, so there is a place concerning patience, you know, to where if you believe the patience, it will perfect whatever it is that is being tried in you. See? Mm -hmm. right. And when I say perfected in you, it means that you get to a point to where you have faith and you have trust, you know, in God delivering you because during that time of being patient, you were listening, you were seeking God, and you were hearing what he was saying. Right. And not only hearing it, you believed it, and you actually put it in your life. Right. You right. start living that way. So that thing that was being tested, you passed the test because you walked through it with God and you trust him and you trust him to deliver you and to bring you through it if that what if that's what the case was. Right. See? So he says, let patience have its perfect work. He says that you might be perfect and entire and entire or I think that word means complete uh, and lack and wanting nothing. See? Right. Yeah. And wanting nothing. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Right. But let him ask what? In faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. See, God is saying, I've given you my word. I've given you my spirit. And he says, so there's no reason for you 
to be walking around here wavering, doubting, and walking in unbelief. That's right. See? Sure. He said, there's no reason for that. You know, I've said so many times, God says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've given you my son. I've given you my word. I've given you my spirit. And lo and behold, I'm with you also. See? So there is nothing that we should be lacking if we simply believe the word of God. Right. If we would just believe the word of God. But see, what happens is people will hear a minister preaching the truth and stuff, but yet in the back of their mind, they're hearing something that somebody told them about that preacher that's, oh, you can't believe him. Yeah. You know, he's a little bit too over the top. I mean, you know, he's he's overboard a little bit, so i uh, just take whatever he says for a grain of, thought, a grain of salt. Even though everything he just told you, he read it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Showed it to you in scripture. Yep. But see, this is what happens when people give themselves over to the devil and they allow the devil placed in their life and they just kind of reject what God said because what did God say? You know, resist the devil and he will flee. Right. right. And not only that, God says, look, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. See? If you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. See? And then he said, resist the devil. Right. See? When you draw close to God and you start walking with the Lord and stuff, you have the power and the authority in the name of Jesus, you know, to tell the devil to take a hike. Right. That's right. You got that authority. See? God gave you that. And not only that, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you got power from on high. See? Amen. And so the thing is that God did not baptize you in the Holy Spirit for your for that power just to lay dormant in you. Right. right. There was a reason for it. That's yeah. right. That you could be a witness, that you could be a testimony, that you can walk in the power and the authority, Amen. the same power and the same authority that Jesus Amen. walked in. Yes. See? Yes. But you've been lied to for so long, you just don't think that, that people today can do the same things that God said that we could do through Christ. Right. That he did. See? Because what you need to understand is God said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. Right. I am not a respecter of persons. The same thing that I did through my son, Jesus, I will do through you. Amen. Why Amen. in the world would God tell you to follow the example of Jesus if the example of Jesus and everything that he did, God says, you know, if I'm following that example, okay, so if I'm going to do what he did, then God is going to do that through me too. See? Right. He'll do the same thing through me. See? That's right. You walk in wavering. You walk in doubt. You walk in unbelief because you want to. That's right. And you're always, there are those who are always looking for an excuse not to walk in the spirit. See? Not to be able to do, to fight and to overcome stuff. See? Because we all are going to be challenged. Yes. Right. Our faith is going to be challenged yeah. because Jesus said, if the devil came after me, he's coming yep. after you too. Right. And he's going to come after you how? Through other people. Mm. See? Through other people. They persecuted him. They beat him. He suffered. You know, they they they, they called him names. Mm. Called him. Told, look, they said Jesus had the devil. Had a devil. Mm -hmm. And that the works and the things that he did when he healed people, when he cast out devil, he said that he was a devil while he was doing all of that. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Jesus said, look, devil can't cast out devil. Can't cast out another devil. Mm -hmm. See? He says, if he did, then the house would be divided. And if the house is divided, it won't stand. See? Right. And I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people today who are not standing, you know, in the Lord and with the Lord. Why? Because... The house is divided, see? Yeah. God says, you right. must walk this way. You know, you said, no, I want to go that way, see? So that house is divided. So that house that is divided, the one that's leaving, you know, the mansion where Jesus is, you know, that house is divided, and that yeah. house ain't going to stand. Yeah. When you're not walking with the Lord and when you're not agree in agreement with God and yeah. agreement with his word and stuff, you know, you're not, your walk ain't going to last. I can assure you that. It is not going to last. 
Because if the Bible says that you can do nothing of yourself, when you walk away from the person that is able to give you victory, to give you uh, uh, the power and the authority to live a holy and a righteous life, you just walked away from him. Yes, mm. You left him. Anytime you do not agree with God's word and you rebel against God's word and you choose to do your own thing, you no longer are a child of God. That's true. See? You belong to the devil. Yeah. You know, when we talk about false Christ, false prophets, false preachers, liars, deceivers, and all of that, they all stand in the pulpit according to the word of God, yeah. according to Jesus. See? <clears throat> when you do all of those things, you know who your father is? The devil. Yeah. There ain't no lie in Jesus. That's right. There's no deception in Jesus. Anything that you that Jesus tells you, you know. None of it is going to be hidden. Right. He's going to let you see all of it right. and stuff. But it's up to you whether you're going to believe him or not. See? when As I said earlier, when Joshua said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve, <coughs> what, did he, what did he say? You choose the Lord. Mm -hmm. You choose the things of God. And when you choose the things of God, now I want you to understand something. If you choose to serve the Lord, then God commands that you do everything he told you to do. Right. Everything that he told you to do, see? And the reason that many of you cannot get victory over, over, over sin in your life is because it's either one or two reasons. You don't want to, or you're scared to fight. Mm -hmm. See? You're scared to fight. Remember the bully when you were in school? Mm -hmm. Everybody was scared of the bully, except for me. Maybe. You know, they were scared. Everybody was scared of the bully. Whatever the bully told them to do, they would do it. Mm -hmm. You know, give me your money. Oh, I ain't got but my lunch money. Give it to me. See, I don't care about you starving. I got to eat. Give me that lunch money. And so, what do you think the devil does? If you allow the devil to bully you, he will bully you. True. He will make you doubt, you know, when you first got saved, oh man, you thought you were so uh, uh, you saved and so committed to God or whatever, and the devil come up in your face and said, open your mouth. I dare you to open your mouth, you know, and tell that person over there that they need to get saved. Tell them. I dare you to tell them. See, See the thing about the devil is, true, the devil goes around and he knows the areas of your life that you are vulnerable in. Mm -hmm. He knows what your weaknesses are right. and stuff. And so what do you think he does? He studies you and he comes up with a plan in order to not, you already got a crack in your arm and he's going to make sure that it breaks. Right. See? And so he stays after you. Yeah. In those areas of your life, you know, if you have a problem, you know, where, you know, you think too much on the wrong stuff, guess what? You're going to get so much wrong stuff bombarding you that you ain't going to know what to do with it, yes. see? <laughs> because the devil is not, you know, the devil is not uh, 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 embarrassed or ashamed of making a fool out of you. Mm -mm. He's not, see? Because that's his motivation and that's what he wants to do. Because, see, with the devil, there are a lot of things, you know, that, that the devil will try to do in your life or try to convince you about, you know, about him, you know, so that you don't recognize him, so that you don't acknowledge him, so that you don't know really what his motivations are, you know, so what the devil will do is deceive you and lie to you. Right. You know, in the Garden of Eden, when the devil was in the Garden of Eden with Eve and stuff, you know... The thing was is that the one thing the devil knew that he had to do is that he had to divert her thinking away from what God had told her. Right, right. See, because he knew that if she kept her mind stayed on the things of God, there was no way in Hades that she was going to do what he asked her to do. Mm -hmm. he, she was not going to allow him to deceive her. But what did he do? He started talking about the thing because, look, everything in the garden was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. God had just created it. There wasn't nothing ugly about anything. So really, it was kind of easy for him. Because, ooh, look at that fruit over there and stuff. And what did she say? It looks so pretty. It looks good enough to eat. See? 
So, you know, so she done, so just by that confession, mm -hmm. she forgot totally what God had already told her. Right. See? Mm -hmm. See, when the Bible tells you to guard your heart, mm -hmm. be careful how you hear. Mm -hmm. Be careful what you put before your eyes and stuff. See? Mm -hmm. Because the same thing that happened to Eve in the garden can happen to you. Right. Yeah. True. See? Yeah. That's why the Bible says to keep your heart and your mind stayed upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, stayed upon him. Don't forget what God told you. Don't forget what you read in the word of God and God revealed to you exactly what that meant. Said, so don't forget that. See, walk in the spirit that you don't fulfill the lust of your flesh. See, because when you walk in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you anything other than what Jesus said. Right. He's going to remind you of everything that he said and that he did. Right. He is not going to talk about himself the total focus is going to be on Jesus and everything and everything and every everything that he stands for and everything that he is. Right, see? right. That's what it's going to So you're going to be thinking about that stuff, see? You're not going to be thinking on the things of, of the world. You're going to be thinking on the things of God, see? Right. right. And that's why you have to keep your mind stayed on, see? Because as I've said, and I've even saw, seen where others have said this, we know when they shared, you know, their, uh, uh, their revelation on it was that the biggest mistake she made was she started giving ear to the devil. Mm -hmm. What does the scripture say that I just read? Give no, give no place to the, to the no place. So if you're going to give no place to the devil, that means that you don't pay attention to the right. devil when you know it's him. Right. Yeah. When you know it's him, what do you do? Yeah. Run. Right. You run, see? But you got a lot of these old folks around you. I mean, you got, you know, I used to think it was like men and their pride or whatever. But you got these women that they think that they got just as much pride as these men now mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. I, I can handle that. I ain't worried about going up in there. You know, the devil's house going up in there. I ain't worried about the devil's house. The Lord is with me. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm going up in there, see. But God told you not to go up in there. Mm -hmm. But you're going anyway. So he ain't going up in there with you. That's true. If God tells you not to go somewhere, you better not go because right. he ain't going. Right. right. God is not going to go into a place or even go to see a person, you know, if he told you not to. See? Mm -hmm. Because God did say that when certain people pray, I'm not hearing them. Mm -hmm. And then in certain scriptures, what did he do? He turned them over to the yeah. sin yeah. and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. See, so the thing is that him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. See? And what did the Spirit do in the lives of the apostles and even in the life of Jesus? The Holy Spirit directed them where they were to go. Right. The Holy Spirit told them what they should say. The Holy Spirit even told them when you need to just shut up and don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. See? Yep. Because, you know, when Jesus was being attacked and ridiculed, you know, and stuff, the Holy Spirit said, don't say nothing. He just said, be quiet, see? Because you don't find anywhere where Jesus murmured and complained about his situations or his circumstances. Right. See? And see, and this is the thing. Jesus knew why he came. Jesus knew what it was going to entail, you know, while he walked on the earth. Mm -hmm. He knew that he had to develop a right relationship, a one relationship with God the Father, and that's what he did. Right. See? And just because we read about it when he became an adult, I can assure you he was doing that as a child. Right. Because everything that he was interested in had to do with God and with his word. See? Mm -hmm. Because at 12 years old, he was up in the temple or the synagogue listening to the lawyers. Those were the guys that wrote the law mm -hmm. and studied the Bible and studied the word of God, the law rather, and stuff. So he was hanging around with them. And so the thing is, is that Jesus was what? About his father's business. Right. See? And as a result of being about his father's business, that was all that mattered to him. Right. Was going about his father's business. The Bible says, as he is, then so are we. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we all about our father's business? Right. Mm -hmm. Why is it every time we get stuck with a little, a little pin, I mean a tiny, tiny, tiny pin here, we scream like we got stabbed with a knife because we're being under attack by the devil. See, because the Bible says that Jesus did all of these things and all of these things happened to Jesus for a reason to show us, number one, it's going to happen to you. Right. 
It is going to happen to you. If you continue in my <laughs> word, if you walk according to my will and according to my purposes, if you truly seek me with your whole heart, Jesus said, this is going to happen to you. Right. See, it's not happening to a lot of people. And why is that? They're not about their father's business. That's right. See, they're not. See, they will listen to any Tom, Dick, and Harry, but when it comes to listening to Jesus, they put him on the shelf until they get ready for him. Mm -hmm. And the only time they're ready for him is when they got a crisis. Right. That's right. when they want to call on the Lord, see? Yep. But God says, because you've rejected me, I'm rejecting you. When you call me, when you were in trouble, he said, I'm going to laugh at you. Amen. He said, I'm laughing at you. He said, none of that. He said, that devil you've been serving, he said, you call on them and let them get you out of this mess. Mm -hmm. See? The Bible says that God knows those who are his. Right. Just because you scream the name of Jesus louder than somebody else, just because you dance a little bit harder up front in the church than anybody else, just because you speak in tongues more than anybody else, that does not make you a child of God. Right. right. See? Because in the seventh chapter of Matthew, Jesus said that many will say uh, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out devils in your name, done many mighty works in your name. What did Jesus say? Depart, Depart from me. me. I, I never, never knew, knew you. you. See? So all these works that people think that they're gaining or garnering favor with God, they're not. God is only interested in us doing his will 24-7. Right. 24-7. See? See? And it doesn't matter to God what color you are, what church you go to, you know, what your denomination is or whatever. But I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be hard for a lot of y'all in these denominational uh, uh, churches and stuff, all because you have been so uh, uh, aligned with these, with these churches and stuff that you made your relationship with God secondary. Right, See? right. And God is not going to be secondary to anybody. Right. To anybody. He's not going to be secondary to anybody. But you put him up on the shelf until you get ready for him. See? But the sad thing about it is at some point you're going to look back and that shelf is going to be empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Because God is going to walk away. Mm -hmm. God is not going to let you treat him, you know, like an old torn up dish rag. He's not going to do that. See? Right. He's not going to do it. And he's told you so many times in scripture, he says, look, if you don't want to hear what I have to say, if you don't want to obey me, he said, I will just leave you on your own, is what he said, mm -hmm. see? And see, the, uh, what happens is, you know, is that these people, they make light of sin. They make light of it, see? Understand what the Bible says about the way we ought to serve God. Yes. Paul says we need to walk in newness of life. Right. The Bible says that we are new creations and that everything about our lives should be about God. Yeah. Right. Everything right. in our lives should be about God. That's what it says in 2 Corinthians. Everything ought to be about God. And he says that not only that, he says the things that, that the reason everything cannot be about God is because he says old things have passed away. All things are new. All things are of God. Right. So if all things are of God, then my life ought to be lived, you know, I mean, almost exactly aligned with the life of Jesus. Yeah. Exactly that way, see? Because that's the only way God is going to accept us. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and you, don't, you, know, you can't sit around here talking about, well, well, if I just do this, then I think God will accept me. Look, man, the Bible is your book of reference yeah. for the life that you ought to be living. Right. Amen. And not only that, you know, you shouldn't even have to be reminded to go to the Bible to find out what thus saith the Lord right. and stuff. Because, see, if you are walking with the Holy Spirit, he's going to encourage you and direct you getting that word. Right. Read the word of God. You're talking about who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. See, you're talking about your life in him mm -hmm. and stuff. So he said, get in that word and find out. See, but the thing is, is that you have more people who are doubting, who are wavering, who have no time for God because they have been so independent of him for so long. They've come up with their own plan. Yeah. You know, 
Remember the, the you know the people who were out there doing their own stuff. You know, somebody said, "Hey, look, that ain't right." You know that that's not that that's not right. But they go, "Look, yeah, it may not be right, but we got our own plan. Mm -hmm. We have our own plan." You go to most churches in this community and in the surrounding area. I can promise you that their plan, you know, of salvation. Their plan of eternity, their plan of 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 of, of, uh, of of walking in righteousness and holiness, it ain't gonna line up with this, yeah. mm -hmm. because too many of them have been taught and have been feared into being tolerant yes. of sin. Right, yeah. tolerant of sin. See, they they're afraid to they're afraid to preach the whole truth now, because they got folks in their own church that are a bunch of carriers, you know running around here with this woke crap mm -hmm. and stuff. Well, you can't do that in our church. I mean, you know, we've got to be tolerant. We've got to, uh, you know, be loving and kind to everybody and stuff. So, you know, we really need to, to let the, uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the drag queen come in and read the story to our kids <laughs> in Sunday school, you know. It's, look, we're laughing, but it's happening. Right. It's happening. Right. I've seen so many, you know, uh, churches that are allowing this drag queen story hour or whatever. Or you've got these naked men standing up in, in, in before these children with diapers on, you know, and, and, and grinding and, and doing all of these obscene, perverted stuff in front of these children. Now, let me tell you something. Every parent that allows that crowd, they should be hung from the toenails. That's right. true. I agree with that. Right. They're doing that kind of stuff. Yes. yes. I mean, I'm serious. That that is so stupid, man. And you look at them, you know, and, and they all these parents that a lot of that stuff, they all got that that stupid look in their in their eyes. Right. You know. And a lot of them are overweight and just sitting up there chewing on a donut or something. <laughs> you know, while their kids are being indoctrinated with sexual perversions yes. and stuff. Yes. See? And they ain't said nothing about that. You got preachers that ain't going to say nothing about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got some that I've seen where they've had some that will allow a drag queen to come doing their sermon and preach the sermon. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. I've seen that more than once. Oh, wow. See? Well, you got a drag queen, a, a, an idiot, a sexual pervert, Yep. Standing up in a place, but it is not. Let me assure y'all something. That is not the house of God. No, it's the house yeah. of the devil. You know, that's a house of perversion. And, you know, it is no different than a house of prostitution. Right. That's, right. Right. that's right. No different. It's stuff. But you got these folks going up in these, in these churches. And even worse, going up in the schools. Yep. In the schools. And ain't nobody saying nothing. Amen. See? Even in the local schools around here, folk that, oh, well, you know, we're not like, we're very conservative and all that, so we don't really allow that. Y'all a bunch of clowns. You're a bunch of liars. You're blind, you know, and, 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 and the reason that you think that way because you don't go to the schools to find out what they're teaching your kids. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. That's why you don't know this stuff. Because even me, I don't have any kids in the school system, but, you know, I hear about that stuff going on and don't nobody want to do anything about it. See, you got teachers that are having having sex with teenagers. Yes. You know, I mean, and I'm talking about it's almost mm -hmm. like that's a plague because you read about it all the time and stuff. And nobody's even talking about that. See, all of this CRT crap and, and all of this uh, grooming and transgender crap, you know, all of this stuff, man, it is so, it, I mean, it's so of the devil. Just think about the control that the devil has right. in our country and in our communities. Think about it. Think about the control the devil has, you know, over the, I'll just say the president because he definitely ain't no leader. You know, when the president of your country wants to groom three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds and stuff, and won't, and get mad when he can't have his way. And, you know, and, and everything that they are pushing, they're pushing it on people, and they're pushing sexual perversion more than anything else in, in, in this administration, yes. more than that. You know, they're appointing uh, uh, these, uh, these 
crazy people, who th men who think that they're women. Yeah. You know, they're putting all of these people in position. They're making sure that the Army, you know, the Navy, you know, and, and all other branches of the armed forces and stuff, Air Force and all of that, that they're teaching this stuff, you know, uh, uh, transgenderism and stuff to be in, all inclusive and all of this stuff, see? You know, and I'm going to tell you something. They're doing all of this stuff in the name of diversity, in the name of inclusion, and all of this stuff, see? And you know the root as to why they're doing all of this is because black people are just been treated so bad, you know? And they don't realize, black folks don't realize that they're using them, they're using their race, they're using their skin color in order to be able to have an excuse to do all this stupid, see? And black people are not smart enough to realize that they're being used like fools, which they are, mm -hmm. see? You know, and then they say, well, you know, we, we really don't know what, you know, yeah, you know, you're just stupid and lying. You don't want to admit the truth that you're being used. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been used by this political party for over 50 years. Oh, well, they're going to do stuff for us. You know, 50 years later, your communities are worse. You're murdering more of each other than you ever have. You know, I mean, you 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 got the segment of the of the race that's lazy. They want to sit around and receive hand me outs from the government and don't want to get their lazy fat butt out there and get a job. Don't there are plenty of them out there. So, oh, and all they're doing is doing that stuff so that they can control you. And they've been controlling folks, you know, for like I said, for 50, 60 years, you know. And the thing is, is that. Like I said, they've got these trigger words and they know that whenever they want to get you hyped up or get you going out here to destroy and stuff and getting in the face of people, they're going to always find something to be racist or a reason to call somebody a white supremacist and stuff. Mm -hmm. See, And they love it, you know, when a black man is killed by a white man. And it doesn't matter that the black man was a criminal. Yeah. You know, have been doggone got 40 different um, charges on it, murder, rape, all of this stuff, but yet they pump those guys up. That's just how stupid these people have become. Yeah. They pump up criminals, you know, and I'm going to tell you, know, and I thought about this stuff. I mean, um, you know, growing up and stuff, you know, I mean, and, and the question I'm asking, I asked my wife this something. I said, what happened to black people? I mean, really, I'm serious. I'm saying, what happened to black people? When I was growing up, you know, homosexuality, you black folk, you didn't find black people, you know, talking about it's okay to be a homosexual. No, you better be hiding in a closet somewhere, you know, because it was not accepted, you know. And all of this stuff about, you know, getting on welfare and getting these hand me outs and whatever, we were taught to doggone have a work ethic. And we were taught to work for what you got and stuff, you know. We were never, ever taught, you, you depend on the government. Look, we were so poor, and we could have gone on welfare, but my daddy said, we ain't going on welfare. He said, I get three or four jobs, but we are not going on welfare. Mm -hmm. He refused to depend on the government. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, every time you turn around, everybody's looking for something, a hand-me-out from the government yes. and stuff. See? And all of these hand me outs, you know, it's all because, and they're saying it's all because we are doing it for the poor black people who have been uh, uh, maligned, who have been mistreated, who have been a victim. See? And see, and that's the whole objective of this whole thing. And that's why the devil wants that. Yeah. He wants people to depend on those that, that are his to control them right. and stuff. See? Right. To, to control you as to what you think. You know, and you know, and we're gonna make sure, you know, that we keep pumping that money out so that, you know, so that you can lay around and be lazy and don't do nothing, you know, and kill people in your neighborhood. But the church see? approves it. And see, and, and that's the sad thing about it is, is that's true. Is that the church pumps that stuff up every time you turn around. You got even the church talking about racism. You got right. the church talking about white supremacy. You got yeah. the church even accepting the fact of killing 63 million babies since 1973 through mm -hmm. abortion. See? Through abortion. See? And they, they don't have no problem with that stuff. When we were growing up in our neighborhoods and in our community, man, people were all excited when somebody got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Even if a person made a mistake, 
and got pregnant, wasn't nobody going to be talking about murdering that baby. No. You know, if anything, they would find a home for the baby. Because right. that's what they did back in those days, right. you know, in the community. They didn't just murder babies just to be murdering babies. You know, because I'm telling you, you know, if you murdered a baby or something, you were not very much liked in the neighborhood at that time. Mm -hmm. See? So that's why I'm wondering what happened to black folks and stuff. They want to hand me out. And the you know, and the thing about it is they want to blame everybody, you know, you know, for their plight. Most of them, or some of them rather, and stuff. But they can't blame nobody but themselves. Right. They they vote them same crooks in every year. You know, even the black ones, that I ain't seen one black politician that talks about doing anything for anybody in the community. They told the line of the Democratic Party, which is totally consumed and in being controlled by the devil. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. every one of them. See, I've never seen anybody in my life lie like those people. Mm -hmm. They lie. And when I say they, they all tell the same lie. They'll tell us, okay, you tell this lie, and then they make sure everybody else get the talking points and stuff so they can all say the same thing, see? They all tell lies. And I've always wondered, you know, when people are like that, when all they do is lie, and when all they do is promote evil and division and stuff, how does that affect their kids? Do they have children? And you know darn well the children see it. Yeah. You know, so, so what does that say, you know, about them, you know, uh, in regard to their children and stuff? They're going to teach them to be the same way that they are. And then if they got kids that say, I don't really agree with that, I ain't going to be, well, you better keep your mouth shut. You better not say anything. See, they want to make sure that you told that line. See, and I'll be honest with you. When I hear these guys talking, especially in politics, you know, because literally in every major black community, inner city and stuff, they got black mayors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got black police chiefs. They got black fire chiefs or whatever, you know. Most of the leadership positions in those communities are held by black people that the people in the community elected. Yeah. Right. They elected them. But their situation ain't no better. I remember listening to Charles Barkley and he was talking about, he said, you know, he said, I go to my community and stuff. He said, man, we got to stop voting Democrat. He said, because he says, you know, We've been voting for Democrats for 50 years and 60 years. And he says, I go through the communities and they're all worse. Yeah. They're worse. See, see, the thing is that, they, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that, My God. is that these people have become so evil and so demonic, you know, that their father is literally the devil. Yes, mm -hmm. right. We know that in scripture that the devil possessed people. Right. And I can tell you right now, I bet you for sure, there are people who are possessed of the devil because when you hear them talk, there's pure evil that comes out of their mouth. Yes. Yes. They have no remorse for anything that is good. They have no time for anybody that represents God or represents God's kingdom. I mean, in spirit and truth. Right. See, they don't mind the religious folks that are just like them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Hate white people. Blame white people for everything. We'll even call a black person that don't agree with them a white supremacist. Yeah. <laughs> see? Now, you think how stupid that is. I mean, think how stupid that is, see? Yeah. I mean, that is so stupid and stuff. And, that, and the fact of the matter is, it just shows you how much control the devil has over them. Because what does the Bible say about the devil? What? He comes to steal, to kill, yeah. and yeah. to destroy. Yeah. That's what he does, see? And, and when you look at these people from this political part, that's exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy people's lives. They want to destroy people's businesses. They want to destroy people that don't agree with them and stuff. That's what they want to do. All that stuff is of the devil is to have complete control, and they are succeeding to a certain extent because they have put so much fear in people that you best, you say something, we're going to come burn your house down. You know, we're going to come do this, you know, and they threaten people, you know, with this stuff. And the thing is, is that it's all spiritual. Yeah. It's all spiritual, man, because, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, that children of the devil. I mean, God says uh, uh, the children of God, you know, will do the things of God. They will walk in the spirit of God and stuff. Now, the children of the devil, what did Jesus say? They're going to do, what, gonna their do what their father do. Over, go to John 844. 
Didn't plan on going this way. Did you ever read Jonas? Jonas. James, did you ever read Jonas? Yeah, I think I did. You say John. Yeah, John 8. Okay, in John chapter 8, um, let me get over this. <clears throat> in John chapter 8, and Jesus is talking, and, and what, what needs to be pointed out, you can read the whole chapter when you get a, a, you know, on your own and stuff, but, you know, when Jesus was talking to these people, because I, I'm, I guarantee you, a lot of these people that we're talking about, they claim that they know God. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you they say, oh, I'm saved. I know God. I believe in God or whatever and stuff. And this is the same thing that these people were telling Jesus in John chapter 8, that God is our father, you know, and, 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 and we be of Abraham's seed. You know, we be of his faith and all of this stuff. And But Jesus said, even though they made the claim, he says they can't hear him. They cannot understand him. They don't even know him. See, because he says, if you knew the father, you would know me too. Mm -hmm. and stuff. So when people are, are, are so blinded by the, the, the devil and stuff, they can't hear, see, nor understand anything of God. Right. They can't even understand morality yeah. because right. they have been so indoctrinated with the deception, with the lies, you know, of their, uh, of their party and, and this kind of stuff is that, they can't understand more morality. You know, when you talk about, well, I don't, I don't, you know, no, I don't, I don't believe you should be murdering babies or whatever. Yeah, you just put a big bullseye on your back right now, see, because now you're going to be hated and you're going to be attacked. Anybody that says, I do not believe in murdering babies, then you're going to be attacked. Mm -hmm. And then when you hear, see somebody, you know, that says, says, no, man, I'm not, I'm not going to be, uh, Treating anybody like that and stuff, no. Well, you get away from me, see, because we want to bring pain and stuff. And so the thing is, is that, you know, they've been murdering people in, in a lot of these, uh, uh, a lot of these communities in Baltimore, uh, Baltimore, Chicago, Atlanta, Minnesota, Milwaukee. I mean, they've just been killing people. You know, black people killing black people. Ain't nobody said nothing about that. Why? Because master told you to keep your mouth shut. We ain't going to talk about that, see? And that's what they do and stuff. You know, but yet and still, you know, you know when, when it all gets to the point to where, you know, you start bringing in illegals in the community, now all of a sudden everybody want to get up and on, see? Yeah. But the thing is, you let your life be controlled by the devil, you know, and now you're paying for the consequences. See, you cannot expect to serve the devil and not have dire consequences right. and yeah. stuff. It's going to happen. Yeah. If I die in my sin, you know, serving the devil, I'm going to hell. Right. That ain't no, I mean, that, that's just no. In script, I'm going to hell and stuff. But yet, you know, you will let people be destroyed. You will let people be murdered all because of the fact that you've been told you just need to be a tap dancing Negro and keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. It's what you need to do. And stuff. And that's what I call those people and stuff. You know, when people get elected to these offices and stuff, they're supposed to serve the people. Yeah, right. They're supposed to look in their communities or look in their district or whatever and see what the people have need of. And then that's what you go and try to get accomplished when you get to Washington, D.C. or even to the state house, for instance. But they don't do any of that stuff. It's no different than calling yourself a believer, you know. And instead of doing what God tells you to do, you continue to do what the devil tells you to do. Yeah. Right. There ain't no difference in that, see? But yet, you want to whine, you want to complain when things get hard or when people start intruding on you and all of this stuff on something that's important to you. So now, you've been blinded all of this time, and it ain't been blinded. Most of these people are walking around in fear. Yeah. They are afraid of these folks that have the power and that are in authority and stuff. They're afraid of them, and they won't do anything and stuff, all because they're afraid of them. Now, think about it. How crazy these people are. You are a man, but you swear you're a woman. 
I'm a woman. And just because you say it and because you try to dress like one, you say I'm a woman and stuff. Your DNA don't say that. You know, and, and the thing is, is that, but then you've got news people and you've got all these other politicians, especially in that Democratic Party and stuff, they have been so blinded by the devil and stuff that they'll go, oh yes, a man can get pregnant and all this. What kind of fool is that? But the sad thing about it, the reason they keep saying that stuff is because nobody will call them on the carpet for it. You have these people that are in these political parties and stuff who claim to be saved and stuff. But you don't hear them saying nothing about that stuff. Mm -hmm. See? The thing is, is that if people started calling this stuff out and standing up against it and stuff, these fools would eventually shut their mouth. Yeah. But see, we got too many people that don't have, they got jelly backs instead of a spine. See? Mm -hmm. You know, and God can't recognize the back of them because he said, I put a spine in there when I born them. And so when I created them, I gave them a spine. What happened? It's a choice. You can let your spine go to jelly back quicker than you can say Jack Flash if that's what you that's want. Right. See? Right. It's up to you. I mean, it's up to you. But see, the thing about it is, is that there's no lack of truth. What'd you say? Yeah, I'm gonna read it. Uh, there's no, there's a, there's a lack of truth and stuff. There's no lack of truth, rather, but people believe, I mean, choose not to believe the truth. So in John chapter 8, you know, Jesus says, let's see, we start up in verse uh, 39. No, no, we start in verse 38. Jesus said, I speak that which I have seen, first of all, in verse 37. We'll make it down to one of them and, and, and choose one in a minute somewhere. <laughs> It says, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. And see, and that's the thing about people that don't know the Lord. The word of God ain't going to have no place in them. Why? Because they don't want to give it place. Mm -hmm. right. You know, when you're walking in darkness, you know, and you're completely sold on the fact that the way you're living and the things that you're doing are acceptable to you, you don't really care. You don't really care. I speak that which I have seen with my father. He says, I speak that which I have seen with my father. But what did he say about them? You do that which you have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not of born of fornication. We have one father, even God. But Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Even though Jesus is speaking the words to you, you know, you hear them, but you don't hear them. You see his mouth moving, but you ain't paying attention to nothing that's coming out of it. See, you totally ignore it. Yeah. And see, that's what happens when you don't like somebody and when you have this disdain and this hate for certain people or a certain individual or whatever, it doesn't matter what they say because you automatically made up in your mind, you shut them down because I'm not hearing anything that they have to say. Mm -hmm. See? I'm not hearing anything they have to say. If anything, if they say something I don't like, I'm going to tackle them. Right. See? Because what did Jesus say? Because of me saying what I'm saying and telling you the truth, what did he say? You want to kill me. Right. You want to kill me. See? And why did they want to kill them? Because that's what the devil wanted to do. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted to do. Verse 44, he says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. People who serve the devil can get to a point to where they are so much like him because they've lived and walked like him for so long and that mind blinding thing is taking place and has taken place and you only do what you hear him do mm -hmm. what you hear him say rather 
You only do or say what you hear him say. You only do what you are told to do. See? Yeah. Because the Bible talks about, remember in 2 uh, Corinthians, they talk about how the devil has ministers. Right. Has ministers. See? He's got ministers. And those ministers can transform themselves into apostles of Christ is what right. they can do. See? That's why you have them in these churches not having a problem with abortion. Not having a problem, you know, with murdering one another. Not having a problem doing evil things that they agree with simply because they are uh, they are a uh, 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 politics and that they are acceptable in the society and so they agree with that stuff. See, and the thing is, is that you know another thing is they think that they get special treatment all because of a skin color. Yeah. Can you believe that? Why they they think because of the skin color that they're special. See, mm -hmm. they're not special to God. Yeah. They, they they die in their sin, they're going to hell. Right. And they're going to realize once they get to hell, you know, they can't even burn up anymore. Mm -hmm. They they're going to be tormented for eternity yeah. and stuff. See? And everything that they have done to other people, God says that you're going to repay that. Yeah. You know, twofold. Mm -hmm. See? A whole lot worse than what you did it to them and stuff. See? Because, see, these people have the same opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and to live a life that is pleasing to God. They have that opportunity and stuff. Yeah. They are not getting special. Nobody is getting special treatment from God. Right. God judges your heart. God judges your life, which he says, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speak. All of this hate and evil that these people are spewing, their heart is full of that stuff. Why? Because that's what they allowed in. Right. See? That's what they allowed in. The Bible says for us not to fear man. Right. The Bible says put no confidence in man. Right. Because what man is going to do is man is going to direct you and man is going to lead you to do those things that are pleasing <laughs> to a certain kind of man and not to God. Right. See? Right. And there, a lot of people, God is turning them over to their sin simply because of the fact that they have refused him and have chosen not to obey him and stuff. And see, and this is the whole thing about, you know, they say, well, you know, this is just the way people are. No, 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 no. People are influenced by a, a spirit. They are either influenced by the Spirit of God, and that's not only going to happen, only going to happen, rather, it's when you get born again. And when you surrender your life to God, that's when you, you know, follow the Spirit of God and the things of God. If you reject God, if you continue in your sin, if you choose to not walk in the things of God, then you're being led by the devil. That's right. See, you are a child of the devil. Because what did Jesus just say to these guys? You do what you see your father do. See? And the Bible says that there ain't no truth in the devil. He is pure evil. He is a spirit of darkness and not the spirit of light. Right. See, the darkness that the devil represents and walks in and stuff, his whole goal is to put out the light and that the darkness can overtake the light so that the devil can have those things that he wills for people to do to be done once the light is out of the way. See? Right. Right. And the thing about the light, the true light of Jesus, you're going to stand up to that dark gone darkness. And there's nothing the darkness can do about it if you're walking in right relationship with God. Because you have the power and you have authority over the devil according to what Jesus said in Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. See? Man. Ain't nothing the devil can do to you. See? Right. But the thing is, is that the devil tries to trick people into thinking that he ain't real. Here are a few things. The devil wants you to believe God's word is not true. Mm -hmm. That's why you got false Christ, false prophets, false preachers, false teachers. They were all sent by the devil, you know, out of that ministry group he got. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. He put them out there. And he puts them out there to tell you lies. You know, and, and, and the thing is, because it is a powerful lie 
for the devil to try to convince you that God's word is not true. Because, you know, if, if he did that with Jesus, then what makes you think he ain't going to try to do it with you, right. with people, with other people, right. those that he sends and stuff? Because all the devil wants is to get the power and get the authority, which he has gained, you know, in our country right now. And everything that's taking place literally is evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything that's taking place is truly of God and stuff. And so God identifies his children, you know, when we are faithful and obedient to do his will. He also identifies the devil's children, you know, and the stuff that they're doing. Now, when we go back in biblical history and when we look at people that sin and what happened to them, what did God do to them? Okay, during Noah's day, the Bible says, Jesus says, it was all evil. Mm -hmm. Everything was evil. The thoughts of people's minds were continually evil all the time. Right. There was nothing about God that people wanted to hear because Noah preached righteousness according to Peter but nobody listened to him. Mm -hmm. And when you are devoid of God, of his spirit, of his word, there ain't nothing left for you but evil. Right. That's right. it. Right. Pure right. evil and stuff. And people look at evil, even people who claim to be saved, look at evil just like, well, you know, that, and they don't recognize the fact that we have to identify that crap for whatever it is. Right. See? We have the demonic spirit of the devil controlling our country, controlling our schools, controlling the lives of, of our young people and stuff, and it's all because in the churches as well, all because what? Nobody wants to stand up for truth. Right, right. When people stand up for truth in the name of Jesus, then the devil has to wilt. The devil has to get out of the way. Right. See? But nobody's willing to fight. Nobody's willing to stand up for the truth and stuff. Nobody's willing to get in the face of the devil and tell them, it is written, devil. You have no power. You have no authority Amen. here. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. See? Amen. Nobody wants to fight anymore. You know I mean, really, I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about people who call themselves saved. They would rather just stand back and let somebody else do it and all of that. But yet God is judging them because of their cowardice. So, see? Right. Because God said, you don't represent me. He said, if you represent me, you know that it's a fight. Right. Right. You know that the devil is going to attack. He's going to manifest. He said, but I put my spirit in you, and so greater is he that is in you than that lying clown calls himself the devil. Right. See? You have authority over him. So while you're running around here, you know you've been had to tell tuck so long up underneath you and stuff that it won't even straighten out anymore. Right. Yeah. And God stands up and gets in your face and say, you don't belong to me. You are not my child. My children fight for what is right, what is truth, what is holy. God, God said, my people will fight. Amen. See? Yeah. And the right. sad thing about it, God said, when you fight, you think I'm leaving? No, I'm fighting with you. Right. See? He said, when are you going to get some guts? When are you going to believe what I've told you? Didn't I tell you that your adversary, the devil, goes to and fro on the earth seeking whom he may devour? Didn't I tell you that that clown comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy? And he don't care what he kills or who he kills or what he destroys or who he destroys. All he wants to do is to destroy. Right. right. See? Right. And he says, when you don't stand up and walk in the spirit that I've given you, he says, you do not belong to me. You think God is going to own up to somebody that's ashamed of him? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. Shame, and you've allowed yourself to be fearful. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many times God says to fear not? Yeah. If he said it one time, that was enough. Right. Yeah. Fear not, see? Yeah. For I am with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. See? Fear not. God says, I put you on this earth to be a witness and a testimony. He says, you cannot be a witness and a testimony if you're not living <laughs> as my son lived and walking as my son walked. My son did not run from a fight. Right. 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 
He fought from victory because he knew the power that I gave him and the power that he had and that there's by no means that the devil can defeat him. Right, right, right. Right. And the devil can't defeat you if you walk in my spirit. Right. Right. The devil can destroy you if you walk in my spirit. Right. I've given you power. I've given you authority. I've given you the, the, the will and even the spirit to accomplish everything that I put you on this earth to accomplish. And it is not to be a wimp. Right. You cannot walk in holiness and you will not be holy and unless you are willing to fight. That's right. See? Because the objective of the devil is to destroy you. Yeah. The, the objective of the devil is to cause you to not have peace, to not have wisdom, to not have, have my love and stuff. Yeah. For you to walk in deception, to walk in lies, to walk in fear. And if you're doing any of those things that didn't come from me, it came from him down there. You see, that's what the devil wants, see? People running around here afraid of people all because of the skin color. How stupid is that? White people afraid to say something because these folks are black. You're about as big a fool as they are. Yeah. The Bible tells you to fear no man. Why are you fearing these people? Right. Why are you afraid? God says, is my spirit in you or did I take him away? Because you know he took the spirit away from Saul, King Saul. He, he told his spirit, get out of that clown. He, was fearful. he ain't going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Why? Number one, the dude lied. And we talk about people gaslighting. Saul gaslighted way before uh, Biden did. <laughs> he gaslighted before any of those guys. What you talk about, preacher? Because God told him to go to Agag and to destroy everything. Women, children, suckling, all the livestock, and kill the king and stuff. So Samuel steps up into the camp, and the first thing out of, out of Saul's mouth was, I have done all the Lord's will. And Samuel said, this fool is trying to gaslight me. He says, okay, he says, what is this bleeding of the sheep that I hear in my ear and stuff? And not only that, I'm looking at the king sitting over there. Right. See? But see, that's the thing is that Samuel called that crap out. Mm -hmm. Today, people keep their mouth shut. Yep. They know that something is a lie when it comes out of their mouth because they can see the proof of the truth that they're lying. Mm -hmm. But yet, want nobody to say nothing about it. Mm -hmm. See? That's why it continues. What happened after Samuel called that clown out? He didn't do that no more. Mm -mm. He didn't gaslight him anymore, see? Mm -mm. And see, and that's the thing about people. If you call them out or whatever, and you stand firm in what you are, or what you are, uh, have uh, exposed in them and stuff, they ain't going to do it. They may do it again, but it ain't going to be around you. Right. See? Yes, that's true. And see, and that's the thing, you know, people gaslight God all the time. Oh, well, I'm serving the Lord. Oh, I'm serving the Lord. But, oh, yeah, yeah, a woman has to have her rights. She can abort. She, you know, it's her body and all that. What kind of mess is that? Now, there you go trying to gaslight somebody. Mm -hmm. True believers don't believe in abortion. Right. Right. True right. believers don't believe in murdering babies right. and stuff. That's right. You know, true believers don't believe in homosexuality. Right. Don't right. believe in transgenderism right. or schism or whatever that mess is. See? There ain't no such thing. Can't no man get pregnant. Uh -huh. Can't no man be a woman. Can't no woman be a man. Right. You know? I mean, and, but they run around here saying this stuff because they know people are so scared that they ain't gonna get no blowback on right. it. See? That's right. They ain't gonna get no blowback. They're scared to talk about it on Facebook and all that. Scared they, go, they might take them off of Facebook and stuff. See? The truth is the truth. I don't care where you tell it. Right, See, right. God said for every believer that you walk in the truth. Your Savior is the Spirit, is truth rather. What did Jesus say in John 14, 6? I am the way, I am the truth. Right. See, so he is the truth. And when you start lying, 
You become a child of the devil. That's right. We just read where the Bible says he is the father of lies. We just read where the Bible says that ain't no truth in him. He can't have truth because he's a liar. The root of his life is built on lies and deception. That's, right. That's who the devil is. So when you see people lying, when you see people deceiving folks or whatever, you ain't even got to ask yourself the question. You recognize automatically this is a child of the devil. Yep. See, mm -hmm. And I don't expect them to tell the truth. I don't expect them to love God. I don't expect them to honor God. They may lie about God. They may lie about the truth. But if they really believe the truth, they're going to live that way. Right. See? That's what's going to happen and stuff. But see, they ain't living that way. Why? Because they believe like the devil. That's right. Jesus said no man can serve two masters. Right. You're going to either hate the one and love the other, love the one and hate the other. See? That's right. You can't serve two people, see? Because, see, that's the beauty about God. Either you serve him or you don't, right. see? There is no middle ground with God, right. see? But see, the devil don't care because the devil will let you be over here and that you can be lukewarm. You can be a counterfeit, call yourself safe. He don't have a problem with that. The devil don't even have a problem with you speaking in tongues if you're serving him. Right. See? Because they, for some reason, they think if a person speaks in tongues that they can't commit sin. Are you a fool? <laughs> huh? You crazy. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a gift. Right. Yeah. It is not your salvation. Right. right. See? And the only thing that it has to do with your with your salvation is to help you continue to grow in that salvation. Right. Yeah. Grow right. in your relationship right. with God. Remind you of things that the Lord said and stuff. Lead, teach, and guide you in all truth. Mm -hmm. That's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. See? Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit don't save nobody. He's a gift from God to help you. Ain't that what the Jesus called him? The helper? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what he is and stuff. But the thing is, is that everybody's going to pay the price that did not do what God told them to do. And just because you identify with Jesus does not mean that you are his. Satan wants you to think badly of God and the doubting. Because what happens when you doubt God? According to James. You're not going to get anything. You can't get anything from God. Not only that, you're not going to even get his attention. That's right. You're not going to get his attention. See, this is the, the lie that people have been believing. And the devil's been real good at getting people to convince people of it. I can say that I'm saved and then I'm okay. I can be a Baptist, you know, and follow their doctrine. I can be a Methodist or a Pentecostal and follow their doctrines of the church and I'm going to be okay. No, you're not. See? The thing is, is that if God told you to have no other God before him, that means no denomination, no man, no doctrine, no tradition. You can't have any of that more than God. Right. Right. He says, you can't love anything more than you love me. Why did Jesus say you hate your father, your mama, your sister, your brother, you know, uh, uh, Toto, you hate him too, your dog. He said, you can't love Toto more than me. But I swear when I look on Facebook sometimes, I'm wondering. <laughs> I mean, these people got their, got these dogs dressed up in a three-piece suit. You know? I mean, with the tie to everything <laughs> and stuff. Got on us laying up in the bed with the pajamas on and all of this stuff. I mean, you know? I mean, some of this stuff is ridiculous. I mean, you know, people don't get that excited about God, you know, to where on their Facebook page, you know, they're posting stuff about God 24-7. And stuff, but they're put, they're putting out now, now Fifi and Toto. Now they don't know something on there about them. They can Toto and Fifi, they're gonna get their time on Facebook. I'm telling you, and stuff. See, because they know when they put the picture of the dog on there, you know, they're gonna get some hits, some yeah. likes, and stuff, and all of that. But you put something on there about the, where the Bible says if you didn't, if you don't endure until the end, you go on to hell. The only people gonna put their gonna comment on that. Uh, or say they like that, or people that, that are in your little circle of friends. Mm -hmm. So if it's this circle of friends, you make it about four or five. That's it. See? Yeah. That's it. And stuff. But yet, you know, you put that on there about that dog, shh, man, you better get out of Dodge. <laughs> you better get out of Dodge. You know? <clears throat> now, see, the, and the thing about it, too, with people is that 
they think that they're getting a pass from God, number one, because they go to church, and number two, because they proclaim Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, there's a lot of people that proclaim me. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that honor me with their lips, but their, their heart, heart is far, far from me. me. That's why Jesus said, you're known by the fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, look at how they live. He says, you're known by how they live. Now, the thing is, is that to serve God, we have to be willing to give up everything. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, give up your plans, the things that you want to do, the things that are important to you. I mean, even family, even friends, and sometimes even your job. That's happened to me twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, even your job and stuff, see? And the thing about it, you're not going out here trying to lose this stuff. You know, when you truly are born again, when Jesus Christ is truly your Lord, you know, it's just the way you live. That's right. right. If he is in control of your life, that is simply the way you live. See, right. you don't have to wake up in the morning and think about how you're going to live. You have already made the choice that I'm living like Jesus. Yeah. I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. I'm going to believe every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. And most importantly, I'm not going to be afraid. Right. I'm going to be bold in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yeah. Strong in him. Right. Bold in him and stuff. Because, see, the thing is, these people that I was just talking about, they don't have a problem getting up in your face, you know, about, you know, the things that their father, the devil, is telling them to say and to do and stuff. So... You serve the God. You are a child of the God, of the creator of everything. And okay. you're going to be scared. Huh? Scared of what? The Bible says if God be for you, right. who can be against you? Right. See? We got victory over every situation and circumstance if we would simply believe what God said. Amen. See? Just believe what he said. And stop being scared and stuff. There is nothing to fear. Right. People worry about, man, oh, it's so bad now. It's Look, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know why people are afraid to die. It shouldn't be I don't know why they're afraid to die. If you're a child of God and you truly believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with right. the Lord. Yes. Amen. True. So I mean, why are you, you know, and I've always thought, why do these people, they don't have a relationship with God, you know, but man, they are so scared of dying, see? I think a lot of people don't know whether they're going to go to hell or heaven, see? They say that they saved and stuff, but they don't really know what it means to be saved. Right. They only know what they've been told because they ain't studying for themselves, for sure. Mm -hmm. They're not studying at all. And so... And so the, 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 the thing of the fact, is, of the matter is this. You know, if you say that you love Jesus, okay, so are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing some of your closest friends? Not just your friends, your closest Are you willing to lose them and stuff? Yeah. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means alienation from your family? Yes. See? Because I'm going to tell you, that's what gets a lot of people, their family. Yeah. See? Their family started looking at them real mean or whatever and all of that. You know, what I would do, I just pull a rock out of my pocket. <laughs> and we'll take care of that, see? You know, because I'm not afraid of y'all, right. see? Right. And see, the thing is, is that I can't think any differently about unsaved family members than I do about anybody else that's not saved. Right. Because God says that you treat them all the same way, right. see? Have no fellowship with them mm -hmm. and stuff. See? Get away from your crooked family members. Right. Those lying, cheap, you know, knuckleheads. Get away from them. See? He said they don't have anything to offer you that's going to benefit you in my relationship with you and with your witness and your witness to other people. That's see? Right. Because, you know, what happens? People, people identify with you or, or describe you based on the people that you hang out with. Right. See, you know, you know how the old saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you got a whole bunch of guys today sitting in prison. Ain't really murdered anybody, but they were hanging around with the wrong group. Mm -hmm. They were an accessory because they were with them. See, mm -hmm. they were with them. 
The Bible says that bad morals corrupt. will corrupt good behavior. Right. See, bad morals will corrupt good behavior. So you can't be just hanging around with anybody. And are you willing to give all of that stuff up? Third of all, are you willing to follow Jesus if it means the loss of your reputation? Right. Now that's a good one right there. Yes. Because there are a lot of people who got money, who got prestige, who have name recognition and stuff. It's hard for them because Jesus said it was going to be hard for them. Mm -hmm. See? Yes. Hard, but not impossible right. for them to, to live a life that's pleasing to God. Right. But today, you can about forget that. You know, you can forget it because a lot of these folks are not willing to do that. They're only going to attend a church where the majority of the people are like them. Mm -hmm. See, they're not, they would not ever come to a church like this right here mm -hmm. because they don't consider this to be the house of God. We, you, you meet in your house? Yes, I am. Very proud to. Huh? But they don't realize, they don't, it doesn't matter where you go. You can go to church in an outhouse. If God shows up, that's all that matters. Amen. See? Right, right, right. That God shows up. See, this is what people, these people get so caught up in their church. Ooh, child, we just built, ooh, that magnificent church over there by Publix. We just built that. It's a beautiful thing. You've got to come see our church. Not to come here to preach or preach. <laughs> come see our church. Right. See, you know. And there are churches that will say, oh, man, we got the best music. Ooh, we got the best music in town. You got to come, man. We got some good music. The music, not the word. Mm -hmm. See, not the word. See, that tells you a lot about churches, see. Mm -hmm. When people start talking about it, and they talk about it, you know, talk about everything but the most important thing, which is the word of God, you know. If I'm going to ask anybody about that church, I'm like, well, okay, does your preacher preach the word? You know, does he tell the truth? I mean, does he does he preach the gospel and all of that? Does he live the gospel and stuff and all that? And if they go, well, I don't know. See, that should be no question how a pastor lives That's right. if, he's a, if, he, if he claims that God called him. Right. See, he ought to be the person that offends everybody, literally. Because the people that don't know him, he's going to tell them the truth about the gospel. Well, oh, yeah, you need to repent, man, because you're going to hell. So. See, you know, they don't really want to hear about that. You know, they, they don't want you telling them about that kind of stuff, see, or asking those kind of questions and all of that. See, And, and then, you know, uh, one thing that, that uh, let me see, where is it at? If I can find it. I came across this from years ago that I had. It said, to God's people, I say in the strongest possible term, beware of those who make light of sin. Mm -hmm. Beware of people who make light of sin, who trivialize holiness. Yes. You know, and tell, oh, wait, can't nobody be holy? Man, the Bible says I can be holy. See, if God says I can be holy, trust me, I can be holy right. because that's the prerequisite of walking with him. Right. And living for him and being in his family and in his kingdom. Thirdly of all, beware of the people who throw a wet blanket on the fires of conviction. See? Mm -hmm. And I get accused of that a lot. And it ain't, you know, people get convicted, but they call it judging. Mm -hmm. See? They call it judging because their sin has been exposed. And, and when people who've been walking in their sin for a very long time hear a gospel message about repentance, they get offended more than anybody. Right. See? Yes. When in essence, God is saying you're offended when you ought to be convicted and repent. That's See? Right. If you were to do that, you would be feeling the way you feel right, right now. You would be rejoicing, hallelujah, and right. glorifying means what God was God saying. Right. And so he says, also beware of people that minimize repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, People that get mad when, when they say, well, you know, my preachers just tell us to come down front. Where is that in the Bible? Right, right. <laughs> huh? Where, where did God say that you have to do that? Mm -hmm. See? They, what, what was that first thing Jesus said? Oh, repent and believe the gospel. See? Repent and believe the gospel. Yep, that's See? Fine. So, where is that raising the hand come from or coming down front and stuff? See? People, I can say, people have been and are 
so stupid that it amazes me. Mm -hmm. See, I don't have to worry about what I need to tell people because God tells me right. what I need to tell them. Right. See, mm -hmm. If I just tell them what God tells me to tell them, and stuff, if you get mad, get mad at him. Right. You know, don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what he said and stuff. And no, I'm not denying anything that he said because whatever God believes, that's what I believe. Amen. See, right. that's what I believe. So if you get mad at God, you get mad at me too. See, it's just like Jesus says, if you have the Father, you have me. If you get mad at the Father, you're mad at me because mm -hmm. I and the Father are one. Right. See, that's my, like, that's my goal and my purpose is to remain and to continue to walk and to pursue oneness with God. Right. See, I don't want to think anything outside of what he thinks. I don't want to do anything outside of what he would do. And I know what he would do because he showed us through Jesus. Because the Bible says that Jesus came as God in the flesh. See, so I know that when I see Jesus, uh, saw where Jesus did something, I see where God did it also. Mm -hmm. See, because he, Jesus said, only I do what I see my father do. You know what he said? And I only say what I hear my father right. say is what the Lord said. So you also got to be careful of them kind of clowns that said you got to be aware of them when they brand you as being legalistic and religious. Mm -hmm. Now anybody that walks up with the Lord or whatever, you've been called legalistic yep. or too religious mm -hmm. by somebody. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> by somebody. You've been called that and stuff. But the thing is that is that it doesn't matter. You know, it says also beware such Shepherds do not have the heart of God and rather than protecting the sheep or leading them to the slaughter mm -hmm. because they are concerned about everything that I just read. Mm -hmm. Because there are a bunch of people out there, you know, saying that stuff, you know. But I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to fear. I don't have to be afraid of the people, you know. And the problem that we have in today's church that calls itself the house of God is the fear of man and no fear of God. Right. That's the problem right. in a nutshell. They are going to cater to the people and not to God. Not realizing that you are ashamed of God because you won't tell what he tells you to do. And not only that, you reject his counsel and reject his word by the Holy Spirit because you don't have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. See, when people come up with their own way of doing things, and doing things the way that they deem right and, and, and righteous and holy and stuff, you know, they've rejected the counsel of God. Right. And God says, because you reject me, I'm rejecting you. See, mm -hmm. anytime you pray, don't call on me because I'm not answering you. See, you know, and the thing is, is that God gets so fed up with those who claim to know him but they are only, you know, in a shell of who they really are. Right. Yes. They are covered up through deception, through lies and stuff, all because of the fact that they want to deceive the people of God. They want to cause the people of God to be weak, to be feckless, to be unknowledgeable of the truth, see? Because the thing about that you have to understand and the devil realizes, if you get a hold of the truth, the Bible says the truth will make you free. Right. And when the truth makes you free, the Bible says, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Right. Yeah. The devil does not want you to get a chokehold on the truth because as long as he can get you to just kind of have a loose grip on the things of God, you will walk in fear, you will walk in wavering, you will doubt, you will also get to a point with certain things where you won't even believe in what God said. Right. See? Because that's why, you know, when we were talking earlier about, you know, on the day of Pentecost, that they were in one accord. They were in one agreement and stuff. And the thing that they agreed with was the move of the Spirit of God and the, and the Word of God as they went out. Because the thing was is that the moment that they got saved, I mean, the, that they got filled with the Holy Spirit, God had drawn people there that they may be ministered to and might be saved. Right. Because the Bible says they came from everywhere, you know, speaking every tongue and every language, but they all left with the Spirit of God inside right. of them. Amen. See, 
Because you can't tell me that they didn't get saved and got filled with the Holy Spirit on that day. Right. See? Because I can assure you that one thing that they all wanted to know after they repented of their sin was, we want that too. We want to speak in tongues. We want because, you know, the miracle happened at the very beginning because of the fact that everybody spoke a different language. But when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke the language of everybody that was there. Right. See? Because it wouldn't have made any sense, you know, if, 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 if they came and they weren't able to understand what was being said. See? Right. See, this is the thing the Bible says about God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible right. with God. See? Right. So the thing is, is that God knew, hey, I know they're coming from all different languages because I'm the one gave it to them. He said, but I'm going to speak through my spirit where they can all understand. And as a result of it, 3,000 people got saved. Right. See? Right. 3,000 people got saved and they started manifesting what it was like to be a child of God. What it really meant to be born again. Because immediately they fell in love with one another. Immediately they began to minister to the needs of their brothers and their sisters that are no longer strangers now, see? And the, you see, that's the thing that, that's wrong with the church. All these people in this church, in our church, and other churches call themselves saved. But why is it that we believe different things? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I serve the Lord different than somebody else, see? Because I'm living according to what the Bible says, and somebody else is living the way that their church says that they ought to be living and stuff, see? If we are all the same uh, children of God, we ought to be speaking and saying the same thing, right. see? We ought to understand from day one what it means to be brothers and sisters in Christ. True. We should, it didn't take those people on the day of Pentecost, you know, years to figure that out. The Bible said that they broke bread together even after mm -hmm. that and stuff. See? See, that just shows you just how messed up the church is. And that's what happens when you have multiple doctrines being offered to people right. and stuff. See? Because the reason that the apostles, Jesus, and even the Old Testament prophets were not screwed up or whatever because they all believed the one gospel. See, the benefit that they had was they all at the same time walked with the Savior. They all believed and heard the same thing. See, right. Jesus wasn't pulling some of them off to the side and saying, okay, well, I told them that, but let me tell you all this way. Uh-uh. See, it was Jesus did it purposely. God did it purposely that they would be able, you know, to understand and to do the very same thing. Because when they were taught all the very same thing, it was very easy for them to communicate with one another and to understand one yeah. another. And they were always on the same page because they all heard the same thing, see, from Jesus, see. So that's why, you know, and the reason for that as well is because that makes it assured that Paul ain't going to say something that Peter's not saying. Peter's not going to say something that Paul is not saying, you know. That is not in line with the word. They all had the same doctrine and stuff, and they all understood that all glory went to God through yeah. Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. They knew that, see. There was no glory for them. They weren't seeking glory, see. They loved God, and they loved the people that God sent them to minister to and yeah. stuff. Right. And that's what we have to be. We cannot compromise the word of God. We cannot allow ourselves, you know, to walk, to walk uh, uh, unworthy of the Lord by wavering and doubting and walking in unbelief. Because we know wavering and doubting, God says, don't expect to receive anything. We know that when people uh, walk in unbelief, they won't receive anything from God either. Because the children of Israel could not enter the promised land because of the fact they did not believe God. Right. Right. They rejected God's truth and they didn't want God's truth. See, They were no different than those folks in, in, in Samuel's day. You know, to where they wanted the king. They wanted to, the, the people wanted the king because they wanted to be like all the other nations. And that is what's happening in these modern day churches. They're trying to really figure out which ones are the most popular, which ones are drawing the most people, what kind of format that they're doing, what kind of program that they're doing. And they're going to take that from that church and put it in their church, see? And what that tells you is that they're more concerned about ministering to the flesh of the people as opposed to hearing from God and seeing what God has said. I don't go around looking at other places to see what God wants me to preach in here or to do in our church, you know, to do for people. 
No, no, no. I'm listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit through Christ, they know, he knows everything that y'all need to hear. Right. And even y'all need to hear and stuff, see. He knows everything. Yes. You too, Karen. He knows everything. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. You too, Jake. You too, Lisa. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all thought y'all were getting out of church today, didn't you? <laughs> I love y'all. But, and hope everybody's feeling better. Because we will be, uh, we'll pray for you. We'll continue to pray for you today. Um, you know, but but the thing is, is that, is that, we don't have a substitute right. like Jesus. Yeah. And really, when you have Jesus, you don't want no substitute. You don't, need one. You don't Exactly. <laughs> you don't need one. You don't need a substitute, see? So I just leave you with this out of Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Call on him. Trust him, love him, obey him. Don't be afraid. If God is for you, who can be against you? Don't let people intimidate you. See, you walk, if you're a child of God, you walk in the power and the authority of God. See, and the reason some, some of you, very few of you understand what I'm saying, but there are many of you that don't because you just be, you are calling yourself a nominal, you call yourself a Christian, but I call you a nominal believer. See, Understand all things are possible to him that believe. Whatever questions you have, this is where you're going to find your answers. Amen. You know? Amen. So seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things in this book will be added unto you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.